In the dangerous world of cartels, where power and violence reign supreme, there are individuals who stand out as the most feared and ruthless. These individuals have struck fear into the hearts of their rivals and have become the targets of intense manhunts by law enforcement agencies. In this video, I bring you the stories of the most dangerous cartel members in 2023. El Mencho in the treacherous world of cartels, one name strikes fear into the hearts of both law enforcement and rival criminal organizations alike. Nemesio Ruben Oseguera Cervantes, better known as El Mencho. As the leader of the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, CJNG, El Mencho has earned a reputation as one of the most dangerous and elusive cartel members in 2023. El Mencho's journey to power began in the Milenio Cartel, where he honed his skills as a member of the Assassin Squad. However, it was after the arrest of his boss and a brutal attack by rival groups that El Mencho seized the opportunity to rise to the top. Forming an alliance with the Sinaloa Cartel, he eventually took over the leadership of the Milenio Cartel, which later split into two factions. El Mencho emerged as the leader of Los Matazetas, a group that would later evolve into the CJ Engi. El Mencho's rise to power is a tale of bloodshed and brutality. He is responsible for countless acts of violence, including mass killings, kidnappings, and torture. His cartel is known for its use of extreme violence as a means of control and intimidation. El Mencho's reign of terror has left a trail of destruction in its wake, with entire towns and communities living in fear of his wrath. He has waged a bloody war against rival cartels and Mexican security forces. His strategic mindset and ability to adapt to market changes have propelled the CJNG to become one of Mexico's leading criminal organizations. With control over drug smuggling operations in Jalisco and its adjacent states, El Mencho's empire has amassed an estimated $50 billion in total assets. The hunt for El Mencho has been relentless, with Mexican and U.S. authorities sparing no effort to bring him to justice. In 2015, a military-led operation was launched in an attempt to capture him, but he managed to evade capture and continues to elude authorities. Both the Mexican and U.S. governments have placed bounties on his head, with rewards of up to $10 million and $30 million offered for information leading to his arrest. The U.S. Department of the Treasury has also sanctioned El Mencho and his associates under the Foreign Narcotics Kingpin Designation Act. El Mencho's criminal activities extend far beyond the borders of Mexico, with ties to criminal groups in the U.S., Latin America, Europe, Asia, and Africa. He has established an international network that facilitates the trafficking of cocaine, and methamphetamine. His reach knows no bounds, and his influence is felt across continents. Despite the efforts to dismantle his criminal empire, El Mencho remains a powerful and elusive figure. His cartel continues to expand its influence, using a combination of violence, corruption, and intimidation to maintain control. Believed to be hiding in rural areas of Jalisco, Michoacan, Nayarit, and or Colima, he is guarded by mercenaries with military training. His ability to evade capture and maintain control over the CJNG is a testament to his cunning and resourcefulness. The CJNG has even been known to launch direct attacks on government forces, further demonstrating their brazen disregard for authority. El Mencho's personal life is shrouded in mystery, but his family has not been immune to the reach of the law. One of his brothers was imprisoned in California and accused of murder in Mexico. His wife, Rosalinda Gonzalez Valencia, was arrested on money laundering charges in 2018, further exposing the CJNG's involvement in illicit activities. Even his own daughter, Jessica Johanna, has been arrested for her ties to the cartel. Rumors and unconfirmed reports of El Mencho's death have circulated, adding to the mystique surrounding this enigmatic figure. However, his current status remains unknown, and the the hunt for him continues. El Mayo Ismael Zambada Garcia, famously known as El Mayo, is a name that strikes fear into the hearts of law enforcement agencies and drug traffickers alike. This notorious figure has managed to evade capture for an astonishing 40 years, making him one of the most elusive and dangerous cartel leaders in Mexican history. Hailing from the state of Sinaloa, El Mayo began his criminal career as a farmer before venturing into the world of drug trafficking. He initially joined forces with Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, another notorious cartel leader. Together, they built a vast empire, smuggling drugs across the border into the United States and beyond. Rise to power began after the arrest of Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo in 1990. 1989. Taking advantage of the power vacuum, El Mayo assumed leadership of the Sinaloa cartel and has since solidified his position as a formidable force in the drug trade. His organization operates primarily in Sinaloa and Durango, with a significant influence along Mexico's Pacific coast and in other states. El Mayo's strategic thinking and ability
ability to evade capture have earned him a reputation as a criminal mastermind. What sets El Mayo apart from other cartel leaders is his strategic approach to business. Unlike his more violent counterparts, El Mayo prefers to keep a low profile and focus on the lucrative drug trade. He has worked closely with the Juarez cartel and the Carrillo Fuentes family, forming strategic partnerships that have allowed him to expand his operations and increase his influence. He has built a reputation for being a shrewd businessman, prioritizing profits over unnecessary bloodshed. This approach has allowed him to maintain a steady flow of drugs, particularly heroin, into the United States. Throughout his criminal career, El Mayo has faced numerous challenges, including the loss of key members of his inner circle. His brother and sons were captured and extradited to the United States, dealing a significant blow to his organization. However, El Mayo has proven time and time again that he is a survivor, managing to rebuild and adapt to changing circumstances. El Mayo's criminal activities extend far beyond drug trafficking. He has established intricate money laundering schemes throughout Mexico, allowing him to legitimize his ill-gotten gains. Additionally, he has cultivated connections within the Mexican government, further solidifying his power and influence. Operating primarily in the states of Sinaloa, Sonora, Baja California, and the Golden Triangle region, El Mayo has made and broken alliances with other drug trafficking organizations. His ability to navigate the complex world of cartels and maintain control over his territory is a testament to his cunning and strategic thinking. Despite a staggering $15 million reward for his capture, El Mayo has managed to evade arrest, leaving law enforcement agencies frustrated and desperate for answers. Some analysts speculate that he may be considering retirement, but his survival of an attack in 2017 suggests an internal power struggle within the Sinaloa cartel. El Mayo's criminal empire encompasses a wide range of illicit substances, including heroin, marijuana, methamphetamine, fentanyl, and cocaine. His control over the production and trafficking of these drugs has fueled violence and corruption, leading to countless deaths and destabilizing entire regions. The impact of El Mayo's activities cannot be underestimated. El Mayo's ruthless pursuit of power and wealth has left a trail of destruction in his wake, with innocent lives caught in the crossfire. El Mayo will continue to play a pivotal role in the future of the Sinaloa cartel. It is believed that his son, Ismael Zambada Sikairos, could potentially take over his father's empire, ensuring the continuation of their criminal activities. El Mayo's power and influence extend beyond the borders of Mexico. He has established connections with criminal organizations around the world, allowing him to expand his drug empire and maintain a steady flow of narcotics into the global market. His ability to adapt to changing circumstances and exploit new opportunities has made him a force to be reckoned with. El Raton Ovidio Guzman Lopez, also known as El Raton, is one of the most notorious and feared cartel members in 2023. Born into a family deeply entrenched in the drug trade, Ovidio quickly rose through the ranks to become a key player in his father's cartel, the Sinaloa Cartel. Born on March 29, 1990, in Culiacan, Sinaloa, Mexico, Guzman Lopez is the son of the infamous Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, the former leader of the Sinaloa Cartel. From a young age, Guzman Lopez was groomed to follow in his father's footsteps, destined to become a key player in the world of drug trafficking. He quickly rose through the ranks of the Sinaloa cartel, earning a reputation for his brutality and cunning tactics. Guzman Lopez's affiliation with a faction known as Los Chapitos, Los Menores, and or Los Juniors further solidified his position as a leader within the cartel. His crimes are nothing short of shocking. He has been responsible for the trafficking of massive quantities of drugs, including cocaine, heroin, and methamphetamine across international borders. His operations span continents, with distribution networks reaching as far as Europe, Asia, and Australia. The impact of El Raton's crimes extends far beyond the world of drug trafficking. His cartel's activities have fueled violence and instability in Mexico, contributing to the country's ongoing drug war. The ripple effects of his actions are felt not only in the streets of Mexico, but also in the communities affected by drug addiction and the countless lives destroyed by the drug trade. But it is not just the scale of his criminal empire that sets El Raton apart. He is known for his ruthless tactics and extreme violence. Reports suggest that he has ordered the execution of rival cartel members, law enforcement officials, and even innocent civilians who pose a threat to his operations. His reign of terror has left a trail of bloodshed and destruction in its wake. One of the most shocking incidents involving El Raton occurred in 2019 when he was captured by Mexican authorities. The arrest sparked a wave of violence as his cartel members launched a full-scale assault on the city of Culiacan, unleashing chaos and terror in an attempt to free their leader. 
The brazen attack resulted in the deaths of numerous innocent bystanders and showcased the sheer power and influence El Raton wields. Due to the violent backlash, El Raton was released shortly after. However, on January 5, 2023, Guzman Lopez was again captured by authorities and extradited to the US. His arrest sent shockwaves through the criminal underworld, triggering a wave of violence and unrest in Sinaloa and Sonora. Reports of gun battles, roadblocks and fires flooded the news as loyal cartel members fought to protect their leader. The arrest operation itself was not without casualties, with 10 soldiers, 19 gang members, and one police officer losing their lives in the crossfire. The impact of Guzman Lopez's capture extended beyond the immediate violence. The U.S. consulate in Hermosillo issued a travel advisory cautioning against travel to Sinaloa, highlighting the dangerous aftermath of his arrest. Airports were closed, and businesses and banks temporarily shut their doors as the region grappled with the repercussions of his capture. The international community also took notice of Guzman Lopez's arrest. The United States formally requested his extradition, seeking to bring him to trial for his involvement in drug trafficking. On September 15, 2023, Guzman Lopez was extradited to the United States, marking a significant step in the fight against organized crime. He is currently incarcerated and facing criminal charges related to drug trafficking. The penalty for his charges is a mandatory minimum of 10 years to life in prison, a testament to the severity of his crimes. Despite his arrest, El Raton's grip on power remains strong. He has managed to evade capture multiple times, using his vast resources resources and network of loyal followers to stay one step ahead of the authorities. His ability to adapt and outsmart law enforcement agencies has earned him a reputation as a cunning and elusive figure. Dairo Antonio Usuga David Dario Antonio Usuga David, better known by his alias Otoniel, is a name that strikes fear into the hearts of many. As the leader of the Gulf Clan, one of the most notorious drug trafficking groups in Colombia, Otoniel has left a trail of destruction and chaos in his wake. Otoniel's journey into a life of crime began with his involvement in guerrilla warfare. He was a member of the Popular Liberation Army, EPL, guerrilla group, fighting for the rights of the oppressed. However, as the EPL signed a peace agreement with the government, Otoniel's past took a dark turn. He joined the paramilitary Cordoba and Uraba Peasant Defense Forces, ACCU, where he worked under the finance chief of the AUC's Centauros bloc. In this role, Otoniel was responsible for laundering funds and handling extortion payments, honing his skills in the criminal underworld. After the capture of his partner, Don Mario, Otoniel and his brother Giovanni assumed control of the Urabenos. Under their leadership, the Urabenos became the most powerful criminal group in Colombia, expanding their influence through violence and strategic deal-making. Otoniel's stronghold was in Uraba, his home region, and the Urabenos stronghold, but his reach extended to other areas, including Cordoba. Otoniel's rise to power was marked by alliances with local criminal groups and drug traffickers. In some regions, he even struck drug trade agreements with the demobilized guerrillas of the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, FARC, blurring the lines between former enemies. This calculated move allowed Otoniel to expand his criminal empire and solidify his position as one of the most dangerous cartel members in 2023. Otoniel's involvement in the drug trade is nothing short of staggering. He has been accused of orchestrating the shipment of massive quantities of cocaine to the United States, fueling the insatiable demand for drugs in the country. His ability to navigate the complex web of international drug trafficking networks has allowed him to amass immense wealth and power, but Otoniel's crimes extend far beyond drug trafficking. He has been implicated in the killings of police officers, a chilling display of his willingness to eliminate anyone who stands in his way. The Colombian authorities have been relentless in their pursuit of Otoniel, with a staggering 132 warrants for his arrest at the time of his capture. However, Otoniel's reign of terror came to a halt with Operation Agamemnon, an offensive launched by security forces. This operation aimed to dismantle the Urabenos and bring their leaders to justice. After years of relentless pursuit, Otoniel was finally captured in October 2021, dealing a significant blow to the Urabenos and leaving a question mark over the future of the criminal group. His capture was celebrated as a win in the fight against drugs everywhere. Following his capture, Otoniel appeared before Colombia's Special Jurisdiction for Peace, GIEP, where he testified about his participation in organized crime and his connections with authorities. His revelations shed light on the intricate web of corruption and collusion that allowed cartels to thrive in Colombia. In May 2022, Otoniel was extradited to the United States to face charges related to running a criminal organization and drug trafficking. He pleaded guilty 
further cementing his status as a dangerous and influential figure in the criminal underworld. After his capture, Otoniel was extradited to the United States in May 2022 to face justice for his crimes. In New York, he pled guilty to charges related to his time as the leader of the Gulf clan. The severity of his crimes was reflected in the sentence handed down to him, a staggering 45 years behind bars, but his legal troubles don't end there. Otoniel also faces coordinated charges in Florida for his involvement in the conspiracy to ship cocaine. The extent of Otoniel's brutality is truly shocking. Not only did he orchestrate the trafficking of drugs that have ravaged communities and destroyed countless lives, but he also engaged in the recruitment of minors into his criminal enterprise. Even more disturbing is the accusation of his involvement in the sexual abuse of children, a crime that highlights the depths of his depravity. Otoniel's capture and subsequent conviction have dealt a significant blow to the Gulf clan. As the leader of the organization, his arrest has left a power vacuum, with substructures and franchises within the gang seeking more independence without his guidance. The future of the Gulf clan remains uncertain, but one thing is clear, Otoniel's reign of terror has come to an end. Rafael Caro Quintero in the realm of dangerous cartel members, few names evoke as much fear and intrigue as Rafael Caro Quintero. Born in La Noria, Sinaloa in 1952, Caro Quintero's journey into the criminal underworld began as a humble marijuana grower. Little did the world know that this seemingly unassuming figure would go on to become one of the most notorious drug lords in history. Caro Quintero's rise to power came in the late 1970s when he co-founded the infamous Guadalajara cartel. This criminal organization quickly gained notoriety for its involvement in drug trafficking, particularly the shipment of large quantities of marijuana to the United States. Caro Quintero's strategic mind and ruthless tactics propelled the cartel to unimaginable heights of wealth and power. However, it was Caro Quintero's involvement in the kidnapping and murder of DEA agent Enrique Kiki Camarena that cemented his status as one of the most dangerous individuals in the cartel world. In 1985, Caro Quintero orchestrated the abduction of Camarena, a brazen act that sent shockwaves through law enforcement agencies worldwide. The brutal murder that followed served as a chilling reminder of the lengths Caro Quintero was willing to go to protect his empire, but when confronted about the murder, Quintino brazenly denied it. Insert clip 927 to 947. Rafael, did you have anything to do with the murder of Enrique Camarena? Negative. I never saw or met him. The fallout from Camarena's death was catastrophic for the Guadalajara cartel. The United States government, outraged by the heinous crime, launched an all-out assault on the organization, leading to the arrest and dismantling of many of its key members. Caro Quintero himself was captured and sentenced to 40 years in prison for his role in the murder. However, Caro Quintero's story took a shocking turn in 2013 when he was released from prison after a state court ruled that he had been tried improperly. This decision sent shockwaves through the international community, particularly in the United States, where the release was met with outrage and disappointment. The US government immediately sought his rearrest, and Mexico issued an arrest warrant for him, placing him on the FBI's most wanted list and Interpol's list of most wanted criminals. For nearly a decade, Caro Quintero remained a fugitive, evading capture and continuing his involvement in drug trafficking. His ability to evade law enforcement agencies and maintain his criminal empire showcased his resilience and cunning. Despite being a wanted man, Caro Quintero unleashed violence and terror in the northern Mexico border state of Sonora, further solidifying his reputation as a dangerous and elusive figure. However, in July 2022, Caro Quintero's luck finally ran out. Mexican forces, in a joint operation by the Navy and the Attorney General's office, apprehended him in the town of San Simon, Sinaloa. After nearly a decade on the run, Caro Quintero was found hiding in brush, bringing an end to his reign as a fugitive. The arrest of Caro Quintero was a significant victory for law enforcement agencies and a blow to the drug trade in Mexico. His capture came at a time when the security relationship between Mexico and the United States was being strengthened, as evidenced by the recent meeting between President Andres Manuel López Obrador and U.S. President Joe Biden. The extradition of Caro Quintero to the United States to face trial for his alleged crimes will provide an opportunity for justice to be served. Caro Quintero's story is not just one of criminality, but also of intrigue. He has been linked to the CIA and drug trafficking, and his life has been the subject of books and media coverage. His capture and release have sparked controversy and highlighted the challenges faced by law enforcement agencies in combating organized crime. Jose Antonio Yepes Ortiz In the treacherous world of Mexican cartels, one name stands out as a symbol of fear and brutality. Jose Antonio Yepes Ortiz 
better known as El Maro. As the leader of the Santa Rosa de Lima cartel, El Maro has carved a path of destruction and violence, leaving a trail of bloodshed in his wake. El Maro's rise to power began in the early 2010s when he entered the criminal underworld. Initially involved in drug trafficking and vehicle theft, he quickly established himself as a force to be reckoned with. His cunning tactics and ability to evade capture earned him a reputation as a formidable adversary. But it was El Maro's involvement in fuel theft that truly propelled him into the spotlight. The Santa Rosa de Lima cartel, under his leadership, became notorious for siphoning off oil and fuel from pipelines, causing significant financial losses for the Mexican government. This illicit activity not only fueled the cartel's operations, but also led to a surge in violence as rival cartels fought for control over this lucrative trade. El Maro's reign of terror reached its peak in 2023, when his cartel was at the height of its power. Santa Rosa de Lima cartel was involved in various criminal activities, including drug smuggling, kidnapping, and extortion. Their grip on the state of Guanajuato was tight, instilling fear in the hearts of both civilians and law enforcement. One of the most shocking aspects of El Maro's leadership was his ability to maintain control, despite facing constant threats from rival cartels. The Chalisco New Generation Cartel, CJNG, led by the ruthless El Mencho, saw El Maro as a direct threat to their dominance. The two cartels engaged in a violent turf war, resulting in countless casualties and a wave of terror that swept across the region. El Maro's tactics were as audacious as they were ruthless. He employed narco blockades, a strategy where his cartel members would block roads and set vehicles ablaze to hinder the progress of law enforcement. These barricades not only created chaos, but also served as a warning to anyone who dared to challenge his authority. Despite the immense power he wielded, El Maro was not invincible. In June 2023, Mexican authorities launched a major operation targeting the Santa Rosa de Lima cartel. During the operation, El Maro's mother, sister, and cousin were among the 26 cartel members arrested. However, El Maro managed to escape, leaving behind a trail of destruction and defiance. The Jalisco New Generation cartel, aware of El Maro's escape, intensified their efforts to eliminate him. Assassins were sent on multiple occasions to end his life, but El Maro proved to be a master of survival. He taunted his enemies by posting videos on social media, showcasing his defiance and determination to continue his criminal activities. However, El Maro's luck would eventually run out. On August 2, 2023, in a joint operation by Mexican authorities, he was finally captured. The arrest of El Maro was seen as a significant victory for President Andrés Manuel López Obrador, who had made it a priority to dismantle criminal organizations and reduce violence in the country. In January 2024, El Maro faced justice as he was convicted of aggravated kidnapping. The court sentenced him to 60 years in prison, marking a significant blow to the operations of the Santa Rosa de Lima cartel. The sentencing sent a strong message to other cartel leaders that their reign of terror would not go unpunished. El Maro's story serves as a chilling reminder of the ruthlessness and brutality that exists within the world of cartels. His ability to evade capture, orchestrate acts of violence, and maintain control over a criminal empire showcases the dark underbelly of organized crime. While his capture brought temporary relief to the people of Guanajuato, the fight against cartels and the pursuit of justice continues.